Hey screen printers, this is Colin from Ryanet. We're back with a follow-up video to the GPS uh, art pack using the skull design for three color design on the Riley 150. If you haven't seen the video previous, click the link up above, watch that, come back and you'll be all caught up. So let's jump in and actually start registering the three color design on the Riley 150. One of the first things you really want to pay attention to is your general layout. If you haven't done a whole lot of screen printing in the past and you're still getting the hang of things, the positioning of what you're going to use is going to be fairly important. So obviously we have our screens in the press, but we want to make sure that our flash is close enough so that when it comes over, it covers the entirety of the design. But that when you push it away, it's not going to be in the way of bumping anything hitting yourself, any of that. Next thing that we want to focus on is our actual off contact, how high off of the platen our screens are, and make sure that our screen is completely in plane to our platen. If you haven't seen the video on learning to register with the Riley 250, take a look at that. Everything that I say in there still applies to the 150. We just don't have the micros to work with. So we have the two bolts in the back that's going to be our left to right off contact and on the 150 you can see these bolts here we're going for tilting we're going to want to loosen this one and tilt it i have one screen that i have not put into plane yet that i'm going to work on and show you how that works so this is first thing i want to do is i just want to get it in, in i want to get it level I, so that it's in Everything is where it needs to be. I'm going to tighten this down nice and snug. I'm going to feel my off contact. I am high on this side, low on this side. So I come over here, loosen this up, get this back level side to side. I have greater detail in the Riley 250 video where I use quarters. Check that one out so you can get a deeper dive into what you need to do. Now we want to see the front to the back, or I should say back to front, what that off contact is. I'm a little low here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this top bolt here. I'm going to tip this up a little bit. You can see how there's quite a bit of flex. So I'm going to keep this down, move this up. Just keep that raised as I lock it in. Snug. Let's see how far we go. There's always a little bit of settling. There we go. Everything is snug. Just I always do this just to make sure I haven't over tightened something or tweaked something in a weird way, just to make sure that everything is snug onto the do not touch bolt. Yep, feels good. My front to back is in a good place. Side to side. My side to side might be a little bit high. I'm going to determine that once I actually get in and start to register uh, compared to my other screens. But that's the quick overview that we want to take when it comes to getting, a or getting our screen in plane level to our platen. So next step, again, just like with any registration, I have my glue on my platen, my white base. So I'm going to print a t-shirt, flash the white, put, white ta uh, put clear tape over it, and then I'm going to register my other screens. All right. So one of the things you'll notice that when you create your off contact, for doing registration, we actually want our screens to be pretty close. And this is something that we'll go over here as I pull the squeegee on the white. I'll, I'll notate and show you how close this really is to the shirt. I mean, there's very little off contact there. And if I had really high tension screens, that'd be fine. However, I don't have high tension screens. So when I do a print on this, you're gonna see that it's gonna stick. So, as always, we're using FN ink, my FN white. All right, so we're going to do a flood. And let's see if my screen actually snaps back. It did! Now we have some contrast there. My off contact is a little low, especially if I'm going to do a print flash print on this white but for just getting a, a, a good first pass,
that was enough off contact. But when I go to do a print flash print, I'm definitely gonna want higher. I'll show you how to do that here in a bit. All right, so that's two passes. Uh, as always, I'm using the Eco frames with the 157 Hydro Mesh. Um, you saw it, brand new ink right in the screen. Two passes. Now we'll flash it. I'll do my registration. I'll put clear tape on and uh, we'll do the print. All right, do some registration. Okay, so this is the beginning of the registration. One of the things I always like to do is pull my screen back a little bit from the, the head clamp so that, because I'm going to need to manually move my frame around, I want to have enough room just in case I have a big oops. Um, shoot something in the wrong spot, need to tweak it around. So I always like to pull it away, and I already did that with the base white. So now I'm pulling this up to try and get this aligned. And hopefully in our overhead camera, you can see that this is, there's not a whole lot of off contact. And you actually want really, really close on contact. Not quite on contact, you still want off contact. Because when we clamp, we don't want our screen to lift up and move. Uh, again, in the 250 video, I go over what happens when the screen lifts, when you clamp it down. There we have the micros to work with it and get it back into where it needs to be. Here we have to manually move this around and then work on our clamping. And you'll see what I mean here in a, in a second. So this is... There we go, get that. And this is one of those things, you want to try and get this as close as you can the first time. Because when you go to clamp, and, this, and it doesn't matter what press you're on, every press is going to do this. When you start to clamp this down, you're going to watch everything move. You just watch the, the top of my screen come up a little bit. You're going to watch registration marks shift and move. And actually, one of the biggest reasons for that is the inconsistent backing of your screen. Uh, on uh, glues on static frames you'll have glue there sometimes that glue can be a little bit bumpy so you actually have a, an uneven surface for that clamp to go down on and so this is something that you learn over time how to maximize um, all right so this is snug gonna give this that little bounce try and get everything to settle and Uh, I'm not going to hold my breath, but that was really, re that stayed. Yay! Uh, I'm a little off this way. Okay, so I need to move my screen that way just a little bit. Tip number 7063, have a loop available. So in case your eyesight is getting old like mine, you can jump in here and take a tighter look as to what's going on. Okay, do you want to scoot a little bit that way? And the bottom one is actually perfect. So loosen just a little bit. Give a little tap that way. Little tap that way. Let's tighten that down again. Again, try and do this as evenly as possible. Lift this. Get those little micro shifts that may, that may happen. This is very straightforward, but things do sometimes slip. That is much closer. So I'm going to call that one good for now. Move on to the next color. All right. Back off, come down as even as I can. I just had a little shift that way. Definitely lifting. So this is where, again, having your, your off contact very low is very helpful. Give this a nice, there you go. Snug that in.
Yep. And we are off that way. So, since this is a consistent off that way, I need to bump both sides. All right, give this another little cinch. All right. Okay, so I'm on center-wise, which is really important. I'm a little low, so I'm going to see what happens once I actually start to pull the squeegee. Um, now, one thing you haven't seen me do yet is just tape up a screen. So I'm going to grab my white tape. I'm going to tape a screen. I have, I have a very specific uh, habit uh, and, and cadence that I do this at because uh, I like to be able to pull my tape all in one piece. Instead of grabbing a piece, pull it, pull it, pull it. Um, that, it, I found that it's more efficient and I get less ink everywhere. So I start, well, I'll just describe it as I go. And yeah. I start at the top like this. I'll pull it, create a little crease, and then I'll work my way down from the top like that. It's not always going to be perfect, but if you start with the best practice, you can always adjust from there. And then you can see here, I'm trying to get this nice and smooth, trying to guide it with my hands and my fingers. And now I have this little piece up here that I can grab when I'm all done and I can start to pull down from here because I'm going to lay a sheet pieces in here and then right here. I'll do a piece on the inside. Makes it a little easier when this piece goes down to not get sidetracked. And then because I have my exposure calculators there, I'm going to cover that up on top. Pro tip, if you have extra open space on your screen that you need to tape up, like there's another left chest here or the exposure calculator, Put your tape on top because if you put the tape on the bottom, you're going to have ink in there and, the, and it's going to get dry. It's going to dry out. It's going to get very sticky and firm. But what happens is the pigment that's in the ink gets lodged and dried in the knuckles of the mesh. And that's what causes heavy staining. That's, that's a, the root cause of a lot of the big st uh, image stains that you see in your image. So by putting tape on the top, the ink doesn't dry out in the image and your screen cleans out a little easier. All right, that one only took one piece of tape there. Next one on the top. And that's what I was talking about is this piece coming here on top is that sometimes it can get stuck. And then when you go to smooth it into the corner, your fingernail can cause a rip, um, necessitating more tape. And like that, right there. I poked a hole. Go from the bottom. There we go. So, even when we've been taping screens for 25 years, you're not always going to get it right. Okay, so. Next thing is, uh, we're going to put ink in the screens. I'm going to put clear tape on top of the white base to help with registration. Um, so we'll be back right after that. I need to, okay, so what I need to do now, because when I pull this down, I don't have enough off contact to, to do this properly. So I need to find a way to raise my screens up. So I know this sounds a little weird but this is a piece of an ultimate cleanup cart. And what you choose isn't really important as long as it's consistent, it's gonna be durable. I literally just placed this on top of the do not touch bolt. And now my off contact has been increased. So 
while that might move around over time and you may find, need to find another way to do it, that's the easy way to create greater off contact that's consistent. So I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to take my FN orange. Let's see, where did I fall? Okay, so we can see that I am a little off this way. So what I need to do is I'm going to loosen one, one side and give it a tappy tap over. So that's this one. And I moved that just a little too far. Let's see how that locks down. Let's give that a shot. But this is how we're going to go about testing our registration on a one on the 150. So I'm not going to flood this time. Just going to print. So I'm a little bit further over this time, but this is this is what we start to do. We do little adjustments and it's a learning process for what's going to work best. And understanding that a lot of this is going to be pivot. If we're way off, we want to start over. really close. And again, for those of you who have watched the video, you know that I'm doing very, very tight registration right now. This is not what you would normally want to do. I'm doing this so that I have to have registration marks on registration marks uh, because I don't really have much of a trap for my solid areas and up for my half tones. So how does that look? That's really close. Really close. All right, I'm gonna pause on registering the orange and move on to my yellow. Take a look at this again. All right, because yellow is difficult to see, I'll be pulling out my loop again to see where we're at. Up. All right, so for correct registration, I just need to tap this over a little bit. So I'm going to undo this one, because this side's on, uh, a, closer to being on, I want my adjustment to come from this side. So I'm going to give that a little tap. These are all how you feel, how you respond is all going to be based on uh, the time, the amount of time that you put in to in, in working on your 150. We're not going to be pros at this overnight. So I technically tapped that just a little bit too far. Really close though. So my registration marks, if you remember from the very first video I did for creating a base white, they're all one point. And the margin of off on this is about 25%. So I'm off about 0.25, eh, we'll call it half a point at the most. So that's really darn close. Let me go back. Check my orange. Really, really close to being right on. All right, let me check my white, see if that's adjusted itself at all. Grab the loop. Perfect. 
All right, so let's pull off this tape. Flip the shirt around. So everything looked to be in register when printing on top of the tape. Now let's print on a t-shirt, use a smoothing screen and see how it goes. All right, flash. So like we've used in all our other videos, we're printing on a district thread the DT-104 from Sanmar. Nice ring spun, got, uh, ring spun cotton garment. Cold platins do not flash fast. All right. Get our smoothing screen in here. There we go. All right. So I just have a little bit of a clear ink in here. There we go. Just need a little bit of lubrication on the smoothing screen and you're good to go. All right, so that's a two pass flash smoothing screen, one pass, FN white. Looks pretty bright from here. Let's give it a good flash. One of the things to always remember when you're on a single platen press is that the more you flash, the hotter your platen's gonna get and the longer you have to wait for it to cool down. Uh, so it's very important to manage uh, all of that and not get, have it get too hot. Keep a laser gun nearby so you can tell when you pull it off how hot your platen's getting. Ink right now is 173, which is about what you want for a flash anyways. So that's good. The platen itself is gonna be cooler as you go along. Uh, keep readings of the platen temperature. Once you start getting the platen up around 180 degrees, that's pretty darn hot. You want to let it cool off. If you reach 200, you can actually start to really cook the ink and have some strange things happen. All right, let's print the orange. Very close, very close. So I'm technically off towards my right, a fraction, you know, 0.25 or so of a line weight. I'm gonna print wet on wet. Let's see where that goes. Huh, yellow's a little light there. And my yellow is a little bit off. So I would probably want to, yeah, I'd want to adjust my yellow. But it's pretty darn close. All right. So what I would do at this point is my yellow needs to come this way. I'm loosening up this side, giving it a little tap, locking it back down again. And that's for a shot. So the, as you print, the inks are going to get warm and they're going to start to uh, expand a little bit. Looking at this uh, from a, uh, a design point of view, I probably would have done things a little bit different, put in a little bit more yellow instead of the 16% that I had, maybe go up to 25% to create a little bit more contrast. Um, my gold in the, in the teeth down here, it's turning out okay. Let's, I'd see how it ends up developing over time. So let's, uh, I made my adjustment. Let's print one more and see how it goes. All right, let's try this one. Single stroke on the base. 
It's a little bit fuzzy. Get the flash in over this. Hit it with the smoothing screen to tap down those fuzz. Those fuzz, the fuzz. Z fibers. All right. So that is a flood print, flash smoothing screen flood print of the FN ink. Get a good flash on that. The print flash print white is always going to carry a little bit more heat and a little bit more tack, no matter what brand of ink you're using. All right. Get my orange. The yellow looks to be right on. Yep, just need to bounce my orange back. And now I'm going to be silly and print the orange right on top. Boom! There we go. All right. With that last test, it looked like everything was in. So let's give this one more go. I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time. One hit white, flash, smooth, one hit white. There we go. All right, screen printers, it's not perfect registration. I'm off by maybe a tenth or, or 1.1 or 0.2 of a point on my registration marks, um, but you're not going to see that on the final print. It is well within tolerances. If you like what you're seeing, hit the subscribe button. As always, reach out to us on our social media channels. Share what, you're, what you've got going. We want to hear your success stories just as much as we want to hear your, your, your failures and what you've done to overcome them or ask us questions on how to overcome those failures. Um, talk to you later, screen printers. See you in a bit.